Kia ora, Year 13 and Year 12. This is the last part of Question 2 of last year's differentiation paper. So there's a, a merit level related rates question in here and then a optimization and optimization question which requires a bit more thinking. Okay, so here's the merit question. Um, we've got a large spherical helium balloon and it's being inflated at a constant rate of this. Okay, so we can see straight away that that's going to be dv by dt. We might as well write that down as we go. So that's equal to 4,800 cubic centimetres per second. Um, at what rate is the radius of the balloon increasing? That's what we're trying to find. When the volume of the balloon is this. So we're given v equals 288,000 pi cubic centimetres and we're looking for dr by dt. So we can go right ahead and set up a chain rule relationship, which is how we always do related rates problems. We're going to have a dt here at the end, and we're going to start with a dr here. Now, what do we know that's going to link the volume and the radius? Well, we've got an expression nicely given to us on the formula sheet, which is v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, and um, that's what we're going to work with. Um, so the link here is between volume and the radius directly. So here it comes. So here's dv, and we'll pop in dv by dt here. So just having a look, we've got this one already. We have to figure this one out. Now, we're not going to get dr by dv by differentiating this, but we can very easily get dv by dr. Then we can take the reciprocal, to work that out. So dv by dr is 4 pi r squared, so dr by dv is 1 over that, 4 pi r squared. If you were away from class when I did that, you're going to need to go over the related rates section in delta, um, or come and ask me about that again. Okay, so now what I'm going to do on the next slide is pop those two factors together, and then do the last bit. Alright, so here's what we've got. We've got dr by dt is equal to, let's just pop it all back in again. Well, the first bit is, um, we'll write it out again, dr by dv times dv by dt, and that was equal to 1 over 4 pi r squared times 4,800, and that equals 1,200, 1, over pi r squared. Now the problem is we don't know r, we just know v. So working up here, I'll try and work neatly, we'll see how that goes. So we've got v equals 288,000 pi, and we know that that must be 4 thirds pi r cubed. So solving that equation, we can divide through both sides by pi, and we get r cubed is equal to 216,000. And if we're good at our cube basic facts, we'll spot in here that the cube root of 216 is 6, and so r is equal to 60 centimetres now. Fine to reach for your graphics calculator to do that. Now we're going to substitute back into here and we get dr by dt is equal to 1200 over 3600 pi, which works out to be 1 over 3 pi, and that's equal to 0 0.106 centimeters per second. Right, as usual when you're doing a related rates problem, um, make sure that your units match up. So it's per unit of time, so it's per second, and we measure the radius in centimetres because it's a length. Okay, on to the next part which is an excellence question coming up now. Right, um, before I go through this, um, you'll get the most out of this if you try and have a go at this um, on your own. So read through the question. If you can't read it well enough here, go and get the exam paper off the website. Right? Um, we've got a cone um, inside a sphere. And the cone has got height h and radius of r. 
and it's sitting inside a sphere with radius of 6. So here's the cone. So this is showing us a cross section. All right. Now, the base of the cone is below the x-axis, and we're shown how far below, right? And the, that base is length s below. What we've got to do is to figure out the value of s that's going to maximize the cone. In other words, should the cone be drawn like that, or would it be a cone with greater volume if s were bigger, or maybe it should just be a little cone, well, a cone with less height, well, that's a bad colour, let's do red. All right. This is very bad drawing, but this is what we're looking at. So our goal is to figure out how far below the x-axis we should go to maximise the volume of the cone. So we need to pop to the formula sheet and say, what am I maximising? Well, this is the volume here. And how am I going to get that in terms of s? So at this point, what we want to do is to get rid of that mucky, mucky picture. So we'll take away... All of that, so there's our picture back. Now let's just take a look at one little bit of the cone. Um, we've got the volume of the cone is one third pi times its radius squared times its height. So how big is the cone? Well, we've got six units here, and then we've got s units here. So the height is going to be six plus s. So that's all good. Now the next thing we've got to work out is that when the, the height is 6 plus s, what's the radius here? So what's r? So to get that, you might be tempted to go and look at something to do with a sphere, right? And that would be going down a very bad rabbit hole, because it's just not that hard. Think about this point here. We need to know the coordinates of that point. And we know something about the cross section here. This thing here is a circle. Okay, and we can figure out what this point is. It's got some x value, that's what we want, that's going to be my radius. And we know that it's s units below the origin. So the coordinates there are x and negative s. But we know the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals 6 squared. We know our y value, so we can get an expression for the radius for any value of s. So we're going to do that like this. x squared plus negative s squared is equal to 36. So that gives me x squared equals 36 minus s squared. But that x value is perfect because that is my radius. Okay, so we can write that as r squared which is equal to x squared, is equal to 36 minus s squared. So let's now go back to this formula and see if we've got what we need to get it in terms of s. And we have, we're going to substitute in h here, and we're going to substitute in r squared here. Now when you try this on your own, you might go on here and, and figure out r is equal to the square root, or the positive or negative square root. That's good, it's fine, it's just that in your very next step you're going to go back and square it. So it's good if you spot that slightly ahead of time. On the next slide, what we're going to do is rewrite the expression for volume just in terms of s. And from there we're going to go on and find the maximum value of s. But we've actually done all the hard work now. Okay, so here we go, we've got v is equal to one third pi r squared h, so that's equal to one third pi times 36 minus s squared times 6 plus s. So we'll expand out the two brackets in the middle, we get 216 minus 6 s squared plus 36 s minus s cubed might as well clean that up, so we'll leave the pi sitting there. Um, 72 minus 2s squared plus 12s minus 1 third s cubed. For a maximum, we need to solve dv by ds equals 0. For a max, 
Now, we don't need to check that we've found a maximum, but we might have a bit of a look at that at the end anyway. So dv by ds is equal to, we can just leave the pi there, we've got negative 4s plus 12 minus s squared. So we want that to be equal to 0. We can divide both sides through by pi. And multiplying through by negative 1, we now get s squared plus 4s minus 12 equals 0. And we've got one last slide where we'll use that. Okay, so we're very close to the end now. So we've got s squared plus 4s minus 12 equals 0. Factorises very easily into s plus 6 and s minus 2. So s is equal to negative 6 or s is equal to 2. I can't remember if they were centimetres or just units. But let's see what we've got. So here's my cross section of my sphere. And here's my cone here. So I'll try and do some 3D drawing. Oh, look, look it actually looks like a cone. There we go. So here's S here. Um, and so our answer is S equals 2. Now, why is S equals negative 6? Not my answer. Well, S of negative 6, this whole thing is 6. So S of negative 6 means I'm up here. So this is going to give me a minimum. And this will give me a maximum. There's a whole lot more you could do with that problem. Um, you can see that that length there is 8, so we could easily, if we were told to work out this, we could work out this, and we could work out the volume of the cone as well. Um, but that's it. So that's an excellence problem. Um, as usual, the hard part is in the setup, not in the calculus or the algebra. And you get merit if you get dv by ds to there, you get a merit tick. But I think it's pretty unlikely that you'd get that far and then not get the rest of the way unless you just ran out of time. All right, um, thanks for watching. Come and ask me if you've got any questions on it.